Okay, so we have already knit the ribbing on the sock and now we're going to start knitting the actual leg of the sock. So uh, we're knitting this pair of socks cuff down, which means we're, we're starting at the top of the sock with the cuff. And the ribbing is the stretchy portion of the fabric that helps hold the sock up on your leg. And now we're going to start knitting the main body of the leg. And we're going to knit that in the main color. I've chosen black for my main color. And so your stripes should have ended with your contrasting color here. So what we're going to do is break the yarn for the contrasting color because we will not need that again until we get to the heel. So I have my scissors right here. And what I'm going to do is leave myself a few inches here, four to six inches of yarn so that I can weave that in later and I just cut the yarn. Some people actually rip the yarn with their hands and break it, which works really well if you have a high wool composition. Uh, but anyway, so I've broken the yarn for my contrasting color by using scissors and now I can set this ball of yarn aside to come back later when we work on the heel. So I'm going to bring that end in to the inside of the sock and now there should just be your main color attached to the working yarn to the ball of yarn. Okay. So all these ends hanging out in your sock, we'll come back and weave those in later when we finish knitting the whole sock. Uh, for now, they're just going to hang out. And if you're the type of person who likes to weave in as you go, more power to you. So yeah, I'm just going to start knitting around. So we're finished with the ribbing. Sorry for the clinky needles. So what you're going to do is just knit all the stitches around on all the rows. Again, this black was carried up on the inside and I don't want to pull that stitch too tight on the first one there. But we're finished with the ribbing, so we're just knitting. Knit, knit, knit around in that main color. And this is the best part of knitting socks that I find because I like to knit socks while watching TV, walking on the treadmill, while I'm a passenger in a vehicle. Um, it's just a really nice multitask knit that is a small project so it's nice and portable and if I'm working on a really basic sock like this where I'm just knitting around with one strand of yarn then you know I don't have to pay too close attention to my knitting which means I can multitask and focus on other things so this is why I really enjoy knitting socks is that I find I can really take this anywhere with me and what's kind of cool about taking your knitting everywhere is that it kind of raises more awareness of knitting. <laughs> um, people see you knit in public and you'll either get stares from afar where people are trying not to look like they're staring at you, but they really are because they're fascinated by what you're doing. Or you get people actually coming up and asking you about your knitting, um, which I tend to get pretty frequently and I always welcome people coming up and asking me about my knitting because I just think it helps promote this craft and we can share our knowledge with other people who are just completely fascinated by what we're doing. Anyway, so I do that through knitting socks. Anyway, so I'm just going to knit around and around and around in the main color no more purling and I'm going to do that for a length of about six inches from the cast on edge so depending on how many stripes you did in the ribbing um, I just I like to measure from the cast on edge how long the leg is going to be 
Uh, I'm knitting these for, like I said, for my husband, and that's the length I like to knit for him when I'm knitting tall socks. So you could knit these as shorty socks and only make the leg very short, like an inch or two. Um, you could make your sock really long, longer than six inches. Um, it's really up to you and where you like your socks to hit on your leg, you know, how tall you like those to be. So, Okay, so I've knit uh, the leg of this sock right here, all in the main color, all knit stitches all the way around, and I've measured this out on Michael's foot form as well as with a tape measure, and you can see that this bottom edge likes to curl, but the leg of the sock is about six inches. So, there. There we go, it's sliding. Okay. <laughs> so, all the way up to the cast on edge, not just the knit stitches, but including the ribbing. Um, I like to measure the leg of the sock that way because the person who's wearing the sock, you know, cares about how tall the whole thing is, not just this portion. So, now what I'm ready to do is start the short row heel. So, here is one of the reasons I love knitting socks with two circular needles is because I already have my stitches split half for the front half for the back which makes knitting the heel pretty straightforward in the beginning uh, those of you using double pointed needles also referred to as DPNs you might need to shift around your stitches a little bit if you want to have half your stitches all on one needle um, and the other half split between two, or if you don't mind working your heel stitches on two needles, you know, it's really up to you as a double pointed needle person. And since I tend to use circular needles, I don't really have super good advice on that front. <laughs> but um, yeah, if you're knitting your sock magic loop style or using two circular needles, then you already have your stitches split in half, which means you're ready to go on the heel. So again, if you're using double pointed needles, um, do whatever you need to do to organize half your stitches um, and designate them for your heel stitches. So uh, here I have, did I start? Yep, okay. So I have finished a complete round. I'm back to the beginning of my round side right here. So what I like to do is knit across the front and put the heel on the second half of the stitches. Not that it really matters here with a plain stockinette sock, but I just have gotten into this habit even with my pattern socks. And so I'm just going to knit across the front of the sock so I can get to the back. And like I said, it doesn't really matter. So if you decided, oh, this is going to be the back of my sock because there's a stitch here that's kind of hanky, uh, that's fine. Make that the back of your sock. Um, I've certainly done that before. <laughs> and it works out pretty well. 
And then we're going to knit the short row heel in the contrasting color. So I'm going to end up joining that back in. We are going to have the main color hang out. We're not going to break this yarn. We're going to keep it hanging off to the side. Uh, because once we finish that short row heel, we'll come right back to this spot right here. And you'll pick up the main color again to knit the foot of the sock. So, I've got my contrasting color here. This wonderful gray marl. And what we're doing is a short row heel. So if you're following along in the paper pattern, I start off the heel section by talking about how to make a double stitch. Okay, so we're going to do this short row heel pattern by using a double stitch which is a special way of just turning our work when we do the short row heel. So that's what I'm going to use here. Um, depending on the number of stitches that you cast on will determine how deep your short row heel is. So I cast on 64 stitches total for my sock, which means I have half of those stitches for the heel. Half of 64 is 32. So I have 32 stitches for my heel. Now when I'm doing a short row heel, what I like to do is I want to get down to the middle third of my stitches. Okay, so 32 divided by 3 is about 10, right, about, sometimes it doesn't divide in evenly, but 10 stitches is about the middle third of 32. So again, depending on the number of stitches you have, you might have 12 in the middle or 11. Um, just depends on your original stitch count. But yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and join in the contrasting color. And what I'm going to do is knit almost, <laughs> almost, all the way across these heel stitches, okay? So I'm just gonna join in this contrasting color here and maybe adjust my lighting. And I'm going to knit all the way up until the very last stitch. I'm not going to knit that last stitch, okay? So this is labeled as round one, okay, round one in the paper pattern. So we're going to knit all the way to the second to last stitch, right there. I've got one stitch left on the needle and that's going to stay there. Okay. This one stitch on the very end in my main color is going to remain unknit for quite a while. Okay. And what I'm going to do is turn my work. So be very careful. I've got one stitch now on the right needle, everything else on the left needle. And now we're going to be purling. Okay. So as you turn your work, what you're doing is you're going to make a double stitch. And the way that you make a double stitch is by bringing the yarn to the front, which it's already there, okay? And then you're going to pull it. Okay, I'm gonna slip this over to the right needle. You pull the yarn up and over so that these two legs of the knit stitch from the previous row get exaggerated, okay? So here it looks like one strand on the needle, one stitch, and as you pull this yarn up and over, it brings up the two legs from the previous stitch, which turns it into a double stitch, okay? So I'm gonna pull that yarn up tight and over the needle, all the way back to the front because we're purling, and now we're going to purl, okay? So it's turned this into a double stitch by just stretching it. Pulling it really tight, not stretching it. And I'm going to purl across all the way 
until that one last stitch, okay? So I'm going to purl everything across except that very last stitch. So what we're doing is we're working shorter and shorter rows every time, and we're only making it shorter by one stitch every pass through, okay? So that's going to make our nice heel, um, not heel flap, but the heel section of the sock. So I'm almost there. Okay, so there's one stitch remaining here that I did not purl. And what I'm going to do is turn my work. Okay, so now I'm back to the right side, which means I'm going to be knitting. So I've got the yarn in front. I'm going to slip this stitch over to the right hand needle. And now I'm going to pull this yarn up and over. And since we're knitting on this round, I need the yarn to stay in the back. But I'm pulling it up again to bring up the two legs of the knit stitch from the previous round, turning this one, there we go, turning this one knit stitch into two. So we're making it a double stitch. Now I'm going to knit all the way across over two the double stitch that I made on the previous round. Okay. So I'll recognize the double stitch because it won't just have one strand over the needle, it will have two, and those two strands are really joined together quite well. So it makes it pretty obvious that it's not two separate knit stitches, it's, it's a double stitch. Okay, so I've knit all the way across, and here's my double stitch right here. So I'm not going to knit that. I'm going to knit up until the double stitch, and then I'm going to turn my work. Again, I need the yarn in front to start. I'm going to slip that stitch over to the right hand needle, then I'm going to pull the yarn up and over. Because I'm on the purl side, I do need the yarn back in the front, okay? But I've just made a double stitch out of that single stitch. And now I'm going to purl all the way across until the other double stitch. So again, it's called a short row heel because you knit it in short rows. And a short row is just a row that doesn't extend over the entire thing, right? So you're only knitting part of the row, not the whole thing. So I'm almost there. Again, the double stitch should be pretty obvious because there are two strands uh, that are joined together really well there. So I've got my single knit stitch that we left alone. I've got my double stitch here. And now I'm going to turn the work. I need the yarn in front. And I'm on the right side of the work now with my knit stitches. So I'm going to slip this stitch over. Pull this yarn nice and tight over to the back, and because we're knitting, I want to leave that yarn in the back, right? So I just turned that single stitch into a double stitch. Okay, and then we just keep repeating this until we have that middle third of regular knit stitches in the middle. So you can see I've got two double stitches on this end, 
and I have two double stitches on this end. And so I've got this middle section here with regular knit stitches. But I'm just going to keep going back and forth, back and forth, until I have those ten regular knit stitches in the middle. Um, so I'm just going to continue all the way up until I see that double stitch. Do not knit or purl any of your double stitches, okay? But once you get there, then you turn the work, make another double stitch, continue on, okay? So just keep following that in the pattern. This is rounds, I'm just looking at my pattern off to the side. Yeah, so these are rounds three and four as written in the pattern, okay? Round three says bring yarn to front of work, slip stitch, and make a double stitch. Knit to the DS, then turn your work. Then on the purl side, what you'll do is again slip the stitch, make your double stitch, purl until the double stitch on the other end, turn your work, okay? And you want to keep doing that until you have that middle one-third of your heel stitches left right here. Okay, so I've made it halfway through the heel. So I have a third of my stitches here are double stitches. A third of my stitches here in the middle are regular knit stitches. And then the other third over here is also double stitches. So again, since I have 64 stitches total for the whole sock, then I'm working this heel on half of those stitches, so 32 stitches. I have 10 double stitches, 10 regular knit stitches, 10 more double stitches, which is 30 stitches, and then I have one regular knit stitch on each end. So, right there. So you can see my double stitches, each of them has two strands going over the needle, 
hence them being called double stitches. Okay, so technically I want to point out here that I don't actually have 10 regular stitches in the middle and 10 double stitches here. In fact, I only have nine double stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then I have 11 regular knit stitches, so that's a double. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. But see, once I complete the turn here, then uh, that last knit stitch will turn into the double stitch. Okay, so just to clarify on that, the double stitch isn't actually created till you complete the turn and start working on the next row. So I haven't quite finished that yet. All right. So what I'm going to do now is grab two stitch markers uh, because we are going to need to place those here when we're going to work across the entire heel and back. So I need these stitch markers to help mark off these thirds for me. So let me just go grab my stitch markers that I forgot to grab earlier <laughs> and I'll be right back. Okay, so in the heel section of the pattern, we are working round five or row five. So the first thing I need to do is slip this first stitch and make a double stitch out of it. So again, that finishes up, you know, splitting everything into thirds. Then I'm going to knit all the regular stitches in the middle. So I've got 10 of those. There we go. So I've knit all the way across to the first double stitch. And right here I'm going to place my first marker. So I'm going to slip that right onto the right needle. And that's just going to, like I said, mark those sections for me. Because what I'm going to do now is knit all of these double stitches. So the way that you knit a double stitch is you just knit the two together, right? There's the two strands over the needle, but they're all attached to each other. You just treat it as one stitch and knit it. So let's see if I can get a little closer to the camera. So there's that double stitch. You just go in knitwise and knit it as if it were a regular stitch. So I'm going to knit all 10 of these double stitches. Sometimes my needle goes through uh, the yarn and I catch strands of it instead of the whole <laughs> thing, right? So sometimes I'm having to redo these knit stitches, which is normal. They're awkward stitches. Okay, so this is my last double stitch right here. And I still have this one regular knit stitch on the end. We're actually going to knit that one. So we're going to knit that last stitch there. Awesome. We're not finished with the heel though. <laughs> I now need to turn my work. And again, I'm going to slip that first stitch and I'm going to make a double stitch out of it. All right, so now we're on round six, or row six, rather, of the heel section. We're going to slip this stitch and make a double stitch out of it. Then I'm going to purl all the way to the marker, at least for the first part here. So I'm gonna slip this, make a double stitch out of it, purl to the marker,
And then we're going to slip this marker. We're going to keep it here. Then I'm going to purl these regular 10 stitches in the middle. So you're going to purl up to your first DS. So that's my last regular stitch. There's my first double stitch. So again, I'm going to put another marker right here. Slip it onto the right needle. Okay. And now I'm going to purl these double stitches. Okay. So same thing, just because it's a double stitch doesn't mean anything <laughs> in this part of the pattern. All right. Um, I'm just going to treat it as if it were a regular stitch. So I'm going to go in purlwise, do my continental knitting purling, <laughs> and just purl all of these double stitches all the way to the end. Depending on how tightly you pulled them, you might have a little trouble getting in there. Okay, and now I have this one last regular stitch here on the end, so I'm going to purl that stitch, and it's pretty loose because that's where we joined this new yarn, so I keep tugging on the end here to tighten it up. Okay, so now I'm going to turn my work, and that finishes row six of the heel. So now what we're going to do is again slip this first stitch and make it into a double stitch. I'm going to knit across to this first marker. I'm going to slip it. I'm going to knit across to the second marker. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're getting back into the middle so that I can now do short rows that increase out from the middle all the way until we get back out to all 32 stitches. So what I'm going to do like I said, so we got to have the yarn in front. We need to slip this stitch, make a double stitch out of it. Okay, again, it's kind of loose because that's where we join this yarn. So if you need to, just keep tugging on that end we left hanging. So I made that first stitch into a double stitch. Now I'm going to knit to the first marker. I'm going to slip that marker. Now I'm going to knit across the middle to that second marker. And now I'm going to remove this marker. So I'm taking off the very first marker we put on. I'm going to knit one more stitch. Now I'm going to turn my work. I'm going to slip this stitch and make it into a double stitch. So let's see, what am I on now? I am on round eight. Row eight. I keep calling them rounds, but they're rows because we're not going in the round. So I'm on row eight. We're going to slip this stitch make it into a double stitch. I'm going to purl across to the marker. We're going to do pretty much the same thing on the other side. So I'm going to 
remove this marker. I'm going to purl one more stitch. Then I'm going to turn my work. I'm going to slip this stitch and make it into a double stitch. There, double stitch. And now I'm going to, now I'm on row nine. So I just did the bring yarn to front, slip stitch, and make double stitch. Now we're going to knit over to that double stitch on the other side. Again, we're doing short rows now in the opposite direction. So before we were doing short rows to shorten, now we're going to do short rows to lengthen. So what I'm going to do now is knit over until I get to the double stitch. There's my double stitch. I'm going to knit this double stitch. Then I'm going to knit one more. Turn my work. And now I'm going to make that into a double stitch. Right? And I'm just going to keep doing this. So I'm on row 10 now. Okay, and make it into a double stitch. Purl over until we get to the double stitch on the other side. So there's the double stitch. I'm going to purl that double stitch. Then I'm going to purl one more. Turn my work. Okay, so what you're going to do is repeat rows 9 and 10 until you get out to the outer edges. Okay, so each time you're going to knit across until you get to the double stitch. Let me see if I can find it. There it is. Okay, you're going to knit across until you get to your double stitch. You're going to knit the double stitch, then knit one more. Turn your work. Purl across until you get to the double stitch. Purl the double stitch, then purl one more. Turn your work. And keep doing that. So what you're doing is lengthening each row by one stitch each time until you get out to the outer edges. So I'm going to go ahead and repeat rows 9 and 10, and then come back when I'm closer to the edges. So you can see here, I'm getting close to the edge. I just finished a purl row. I've got one double stitch and two regular stitches left. So I'm, I'm still going to keep going. <laughs> uh, what we want to do is try to get all the way to the edge minus that one double stitch on the end. So I'm just going to keep going here but you can definitely see that the heel of the sock is starting to look like a proper heel which is awesome and yeah so our short rows are getting longer which means I'm trying to find things to say on here okay <laughs> so again I'm knitting across all the way to the double stitch I'm going to knit that double stitch and knit one more. So on this side, I've got the double stitch on the end and one regular knit stitch left. All right, and I'm going to keep going. So slip, make a double stitch, purl all the way across to the double stitch. And we're definitely going to end the heel on a purl row because what that will do is it will get us back to the side where we left our main color hanging and we'll continue in the sock with the main color at that point. But we're not quite finished with the heel yet so... So 
So purl the double stitch, purl one more. So you can see I've got one double stitch and one regular stitch, so we're going to go again. So I'm going to slip this, make a double stitch out of it, knit across to the double stitch. knit the double stitch, knit one more. Okay, so you can see the only stitch I have left now is a double stitch, which means we're almost finished. So I'm going to slip this stitch, make a double stitch out of it, and purl across. So you know that you're on your last row of the heel when you have two double stitches on this end. Two double stitches right next to each other. And we are literally going to purl all the way across, okay? So I'm gonna purl to that double stitch. We're going to purl the double stitch. We're going to purl one more, but this time we're not going to turn. We're also going to purl this last double stitch. And we are finished with our short row heel. Okay, so instead of making that last turn and making that last double stitch, we just purl to the end. And now, like I said, I'm on the same side as that main color yarn we left hanging. So we finished our short row heel. First take a moment to recognize that you've just accomplished something pretty awesome. So there's our beautiful short row heel. Oh my gosh, I love these things so much. I love this. It looks like a seam, but it's not. And it just looks so professional. Anyway, so you've just finished your short row heel. So what you'll do at this point is break the yarn uh, from your contrasting color, the color you just used on your heel. I'll grab my scissors. Don't forget to leave a few inches here so you can weave that in later with ease. Okay. So you break the yarn for that contrasting color. Tuck those ends into the inside of the sock. Okay, if you don't do that, you can fix that later, but I like to do it to keep things looking clean while I'm working on my sock. Okay. So you left the working yarn of your main color hanging off to the side here. We Before we started the heel, we knit across the front of the sock. So now what you're going to do is take your main color and knit across the back of the sock to finish that round. So let me just go ahead and do that. And right here, okay, right here, this very first stitch, because you've got all this extra room, I like to pull this really tightly, really tightly. Okay, guys? Now, this yarn is loose because we, we've got a bunch of ends in there, okay? So pull these, pull
pull on those ends, get it nice and tight. Pull on your working yarn, get it nice and tight, okay? Because those of you who have worked heels before know that little gaps show up all over the place. So I like to knit the first three stitches here really tightly. Just the first few, okay? Two, three, four, something like that. And that's going to help close up that hole. Also later when we go back and weave in the ends, that will also help close up any little hole that might have formed right there. But yeah, we'll just knit across this bottom of the sock here. And when you get to these two double stitches on the end, you just knit them like before, okay? So you just treat them as a regular stitch and you knit them. And you've completely finished the heel and you're ready to move on to the foot in the main color. So look at that, guys. Let me give you a side shot here. You've got that short row heel down at the bottom, nicely placed in your contrasting color so it sticks out really nicely. And all you'll do is keep knitting around here to get the foot of your sock and you'll just knit in the main color. So I'll have on the next video, I'll talk about knitting the foot of the sock as well as the toe of the sock and how to close it off. So. Look for a pattern update coming soon. I'll update the pattern with that information and I'll put out another video tutorial about that section of the sock. So until next time guys, happy knitting.